So welcome to our last session for this week. So our last topic for this week, still under chapter 1, we have lesson 5, Measures of Central Tendency. So our objectives for this lesson is to identify the appropriate measure of central tendency by the level of measurement, acknowledge the importance of calculating the measures of central tendency, and calculate the measures of central tendency. So we have here an ungrouped data. So the following data are the monthly income of 35 families residing in a nearby barangay or village. So you have their 12,000, 12,000 up to 60,000. It is arranged from the lowest monthly income to the highest monthly income, which is 60,000. You can pause the video here to try to group this ungrouped data or write the ungrouped data in a frequency distribution table. The frequency distribution table of the ungrouped data is as follows. You have there the monthly family income in pesos, 12,000, 20,000, 24,000, and so on. And then you have the number of families, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 5, 2, and 3. Notice that the highest data or the highest datum is 60,000 pesos, while the lowest is 12,000 pesos. These highest and lowest values are commonly known as maximum and minimum. Respectively, these are the summary measures of the data set. They represent important location values in the distribution of data. However, these measures do not give a measure of location in the center of the distribution. So one way to describe data is by using its measures of central tendency. You have their three. You're familiar with this already. Mean, median, and mode. First one, we have mean. Your mean is denoted by the symbol X bar. It is the most widely used measure of central tendency, meaning it's the most common. Your mean is the sum of all observations in the data set divided by the number of observations. The symbol you see there is called the mu or spelled as MU. It's equal to the E that you see there. It's the summation from I is equal to 1 to N. So, ibig sabihin, you're going to add all the data sets, X sub I, divided by the total number of observations, which is N. In example, if we are to compute for the average monthly family income of the residents that we have asked, we are to use the formula we know for the average adding all the values and dividing by the number of data. So you add it, 12,000 plus 12,000 plus 20,000 up to 60,000 pesos. And then divide it by the total number. We can see that in the slide then. Monthly income of 35 families. So the sum divided by 35, you have their 1,050,250 divided by 35. The answer is 30,007.14. So in this ungrouped data, your mean is 30,007.14. You can do this manually or using a calculator, or there is also a shortcut for computing mean of ungrouped data. It's a nine-step process using a scientific calculator. Note that this Specific steps are used for a specific version of a Casio calculator. So not all calculators can be computed like this as the following steps. Make sure it's stat mode and so on. You can pause the video and try to compute for the mean of the ungrouped data using this method. How do we compute for the mean of a group data? So you have there the monthly family of income in pesos as the first column. Second column, the number of families or the frequency. And then you have the last one, the monthly family income multiplied to the frequency. So you multiply it, 12,000 times 2, that's 24,000. Next, you have 20,000 times 3, that's 60,000. Multiplying it all, you have there the third column, and then you total it. The total for that multiplied column is 1,050,250. Notice that the total of the column Fx is also equal to the total of the ungrouped data previously shown. So it's the same calculation, 1,050,250 divided by 35, you have 30,007.14. There is also a way to compute this using a scientific calculator, which is shown by the following. You have there seven steps. 
Okay, so you're going to input the values on the table. You can pause the video and try to follow these steps using your scientific calculator. Next, you have there the second measure of central tendency, which is the median. So the median, it's denoted by the symbol X, and then you have a wavy symbol there. It's the middle value in an array of observations. So sa gitna. However, your data should be arranged in ascending or descending order, meaning from lowest to greatest or greatest to lowest. Then the median is the middle value so that half of the observations are less than or equal to while the half of the observations are greater than or equal to. In simpler terms, the middle, so yung gitna. For example, the following data are the monthly income of 35 families residing in a nearby barangay or village. If you list down individually the values of the monthly family income from lowest to highest, such as follows, we can see that the middle value is 32,250. How about if we have a group data, how do we get the median of the group data? So in a group data, you have their monthly family income in pesos, and then you have your number of families. To get the median, get your cumulative frequencies. So dito ginagamit yung less than and greater than cumulative frequencies. In this case, let's just use greater than cumulative frequency or greater than CF. Our data observations are 35. We know that your median falls in the 18th position because of the formula 35 plus 1, 36, divided by 2, 18th. Look at your column for greater than CF. See where your 18th observation or datum falls. For example, in your first row, two data falls there. And then you have your second row, five. Five as greater than CF. That means five data falls under second row. And then you have nine. So you have nine data fall, falling under the third row. If you have the 18th observation, where does it fall? 17th or 26th? So your 18th observation or datum falls under the 26th. Thus, your median is the value of the monthly family income in pesos there, which is 32,250. If we erased one data, we are now at an even number of data, which is 34. The median value is the average of the two middle values. To get the two middle values, get your total number of observations, which is 34, divided by 2, you have 17. So your two middle values are 17 and the next following observation. So 17 and 18 observation. In our ungrouped data, your 17 observation is 25,000 and your 18 observation is 32,250. To get the median, get the average of these values. So add 25,000 and 32,250 and then divided by 2, you have your median of these ungrouped data as 28,625. The last measure of central tendency that we have is the mode. The measure of central tendency is the mode. Your mode is represented by that symbol. Your mode is the value that occurs most often, or it is the value that has the highest frequency. Ungrouped data as this, we can see the frequencies by counting how many data or it's better to be seen by using a group data if you group the observations. You have their 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 5, 2, and 2. The data with the highest number of frequencies or frequencies is 32,250, having the frequency of 9 or 9 families. In summary, your mean is the most commonly used measure of central tendency. Most commonly, we call it as average. There is a weakness for mean. The weakness for mean falls under its outliers. Outliers are data that are far. For example, you have data, for datas 1 to 5, you have the values 2, 7, 6, 3, 5, and then you have the outlier of 40 or the outlier of 30. This is because if you have an outlier, your mean tends to be pulled towards that outlier. So the value gets closer to the outlier. Next, you have median. It is not easily affected by outliers. It is the middle value of the observation. Meron kaya pag odd, meron pag even. And then you have your mode. Your mode is the most frequent. 
some data have unimodal, bimodal, and trimodal. Ibig sabihin nun, merong mga ibang data na merong more than one modes. If you have one mode, that's that's what we call a unimodal data set. If you have two modes, that's what we call a bimodal. If you have three modes, it's trimodal. If it's more than more than three modes, <laughs> <laughs> if you have more than three modes, that's what we call a multimodal data set. Let's apply those measures of central tendency in real life. This screenshot was taken directly from ESPN. So you all know Kobe Bryant, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and Kevin Love. PPG stands for points per game. Okay? To determine PPG, a statistician or an avid fan, adds up how many points Kobe Bryant or the other players has scored throughout the year and divides by the number of games he played. So, ibig sabihin, kukunin mo kung ilang points ang na shoot ni Kobe Bryant and then divide mo kung ilan yung games na pinlay niya. This is what we call finding the mean. For me, Jan, using the same example for mean, the PPG can be easily affected by a very bad play or a very good play. To avoid this extreme value affecting the overall PPG, the median may be computed. And then you have the last one, which is the mode. The mode may be beneficial for a manager of a shoe store. Another example. For example, you would not see size 17 shoes stocked on the floor. This implies that very few people have a size 17 shoe size. Therefore, store managers may look at data and determine which shoe size is sold the most. Siyempre, kung maraming size 9, maraming size 7, maraming size 8, dun sila magsa-stock up. Managers would want to stock the floor or the shoe with the best-selling shoe size. So we have here a summary flow chart. This would help us determine what is the best measure of central tendency to use by determining the variable's level of measurement. If you have nominal data, the best measure of central tendency to use is mode. If you have ordinal interval and ratio, you, you first need to determine what is the size of the data. Is it small or is it large? To determine the size, generally a small data is less than 30. A large data, a large data set is greater than or equal to 30. So if you have small, it is best to use mean or median. If you have a large data set, you need to determine first, are there outliers? If there is outliers, it is best to use median. However, if there is no outliers, it's best to use, of course, mean. So that is it for our lesson five. I congratulate you for making it through this week and see you next week for our next batch of online classes. Who's that?